So the first Java program. program. Now we do, uh, I will explain to you uh, the program here in its part, in its comment, I comment about the various parts. Then we will do together in, uh, with Eclipse. And the first program is uh, usually hello world. You have to print out hello world. That's not very much. Obviously, programming, as in any other activity, copying from the smart people is, is a good thing. And uh, looking at what other people do is a good thing. And uh, you, if you choose the, the smart people to copy, it's better for you. Um, there is a, a, a in, uh, in one of the books that I mentioned to you before in the, the chunk of a uh, lecture before, the, the book by Bruce, Bruce Ecker, there is a, a, a section which is called Building a Java Program. So if you want to read as a complementary le uh, lesson that, uh, that part of the book, this is okay. And the, there is also the same section in the other book that I told you. It's a little different, but uh, uh, looking at different things and, uh, can be useful. So uh, there are a few things that we have to learn. Yeah, create a new Java project within Eclipse. Create a new Java package and create a new Java file three actions. Uh, as you will see, Java is decomposed in a lot of uh, small program programs. Each program is point Java file, is a class. And uh, one rule that uh, also I mentioned later in uh, one of the next uh, is that programs should be not very long. Uh, a single program that is very long is Became, it becomes difficult to maintain. To look at the code, you will get lost. The ideal is uh, uh, as much as your page on the screen of your computer, not longer. Or, uh, yeah, we will do longer, but not much, not much longer. So uh, uh, Java encourages this, uh, this uh, type of the program. Each class, each chunk of code, uh, go separately and then you have to connect all the problems together. For doing this you have to do uh, first uh, creating a project. In this project you can have several packages. In each package you put together classes that belong, that do more or less the same task uh, or are ancillary to, to do subtask. And the Java file is the the class that you create. We don't start. We uh, we are start starting of classes, but we you don't know what it is a class. For now, the, a class is simply the the minimal program that you can write in Java. You don't have to think uh, that the class uh, is uh, uh, correspond to some particular type of objects, because usually uh, the traditional way to present this is to say, okay. As in your uh, life, you have uh, furniture. Furniture is made of object, table, in the, and uh, the chair, chairs. So <coughs> you can build a class which is uh, furniture. Then you have subclasses that are uh, particular subs of furniture, for instance, chair, table, the class of the chair and tables, and then you can have particular chairs and particular tables. And then uh, create the effect that uh, uh, so what classes are and what objects are. In particular, the a particular chair is an instantiation of a single object. However, the way you, uh, uh, this can be, uh, this, uh, in my view, gives you a wrong idea of what is a class. In the sense that uh, what is actually a class is of, uh, often the 
dictated by the task that you have, <coughs> the way to organize the code. There are internal reasons for doing something, to make something a class or not to make something a class. Even an algorithm, if you have some procedural programming in mind, you do a routine to do some task. Here often you have uh, two choices, or doing a class for doing some task, or doing a method, a routine. Method is the, the name in object-oriented programming that substitute routine. So if you can do maybe an algorithm, you can do just a simple method, or you can create a class for doing, for doing these things. And the reason why is depends on the pro how you project how you design your project. <coughs> All of this you, you can see, you can read on the last Vogel tutorials, but uh, we, we start from, uh, you, we will do it right away after this, this presentation. So, uh, this is a chunk of program, probably the the, mo the most simple program that you can see. Uh, this is a class, as you see, and there are uh, things that you uh, see written in red. They are modifier of the program. Then I will go to explain each the meaning of each, each one of them. And in the first line, let me see. In the first line, there is a declaration. This class belongs to the package called on.geoframe.first. Why this name? Now, assume that in the world, you want to write your package. And you want that, uh, that that package has a, a unique identifiers all, all over the world. Meaning that is Conchetas, hello first. That is uh, Giovanna, hello first. Uh, the idea is that uh, in the world we have uh, a unique classification of things which is given by internet. So if you think that it could be uh, geoframe.org, for instance, it could be a website. And you can think to have uh, your own website, for instance, that has th that name or uh, another name. And then you add on that website a page which is first. And this sort of guarantees that uh, your program that is under the package first will have a unique identifier in the world. This even if you don't really do, uh, you don't go and reserve a uh, a website called Geoframe and uh, Geoframe.org. Even if, if you don't, don't do so, we have this scheme for doing naming your packages. <coughs> the other is a, a class. There is not very much in, the, in this class. Just uh, an execution of a command. Is the bare bone class that you can. Uh, design. Yeah, as you can see yes. <coughs> here, and here you um, you have an identifier for, for there are first several things that we want to show. And um, first, this class is public. You have two modifiers. One is public. Uh, public means that it is visible to everyone. Not all the class that you want to, to do will be public. The second is a, is a class. The second identifier it says that the code that follows between the two um, braces is a class. This brace and the other brace. Uh, then there is the name of the class. Hello world. Uh, hello, usually the convention to write the name of the class is that you start 
uh, they start with a capital letter and for any words you have a capital letter. This is conventional, but is adopted on, almost everywhere and I think that the clips com complain if you don't do like this. So, public. What means public? Publics is a modifier. There are other two modifiers of the same type, which is protected and, and uh, private. An object that is private is uh, invisible to the ex external. Um, if you mean private, and then you make it put in another file, another class, the other class, you cannot assess the first class from the second one. You cannot assess from a different class, a private class, that it, uh, which is in, a, in another file. And uh, protected, protected is uh, something in between private and public. And uh, all the subclasses can see what is in, inside the class that is protected but not other classes. So we are thinking to a hierarchy of, of things. Uh, private, uh, protected, and uh, public refers not only to classes, but also to methods, as we would see. But here we don't have any method, actually. Oh, well, we have one method. This class is composed by just one method. One execution, which is the main method. Okay, the word name, hello world, uh, and we build a class that is uh, written like that. This is actually a method. <coughs> a synonym of method can be routine, can be function. In and uh, here we execute, the main is uh, necessary, the main is uh, a special, special method that commands the execution of the program. You can write classes without the main method, but this means that you have to provide another main method to run all the other classes. This is not exactly mandatory. For instance, uh, uh, object, uh, uh, object modeling system, the one we use for our model, doesn't use main. It provides another structure that commands the execution, but similar to main. As you see, uh, uh, all, the, all the method contains is, is in between two braces. The first one on the right side and the, this one here. Main has a, a, a mandatory a string as a, a string as a as a, is a argument. A string the the way to to write uh, the, the the thing inside is a, a, you see string is a capital letter. So you can, uh, by the, 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 the information I gave to you, you can think that string is a class. Uh, in fact, Java is many things. Java is a, a language that provides you uh, with a, a flow to do operation or a, 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 or a, a system to organize classes is a set of libraries and that are already provided to do a lot, a huge quantity of uh, operation that otherwise you have to program. When I started with my C program, as I told you before, I had to redis rediscover the will at any time to build the way to contain strings. So I did my library that at the time I called FreeTar for libraries that still are uh, in the, some codes that I wrote, maybe Giovanna knows some part of GeoTop contains this, these things that I did more than 20 years ago. Here you have a lot of libraries and strings 
String is a class defined in one particular library of Java, and Java has a huge library. And then Java is also a third thing, which is Java Virtual Machine. The Java Virtual Machine is a model of a computer made in software that ab abstract the hardware of your system. Your my computer is different from your, is different from your. We have different operating systems. And uh, the Java Virtual Machine hide all these differences. So you can program once and run everywhere, more or less was the motto of Java. And uh, before it was not guaranteed, let's say. Even uh, also you, uh, with Java, you can do very complicated operation, actually, not simple operation, because doing a, uh, a program that run everywhere, but is very simple, is easy. Is doing complex program that run everywhere in this difficult. So string is a class. The two square parentheses after strings means that it's a vector or an array of string of, of, of characters actually. Strings is an array of characters. And hearts is the name it stands for arguments. Is the, the series of strings that we can do to a method. This is general. Uh, if you provide that a series of strings for uh, for uh, for, main, for the, the main method, this will be taken as a uh, modifier of the behavior of the, our program. So we say hello world parentheses in a, a certain of strings. These strings will be used for for this. And we will see an example of that. So, public, you already say what is public. There is another thing here that which is important, static. A public static void. Three modifiers here. Public, we already know what it is public. It's public, but is a before we had a class that was public. Here we have a method that is public, a function that is public, is visible everywhere. If we want the main, we say that main is the, the, the program that commands an execution, so it must be public, because otherwise it's not visible outside. Static, what is a static? Static, in Italian statico, is something that exists and uh, uh, the normal way is to say, say that this method belongs to a class and not to an object. So what is the difference between class and object? I can do the class of chairs. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, chair, chair one, chair two, chair three. These are the objects of the class. So I define my class. In my execution, you don't know how now, but you will know. You can say now, now we build one object of that class. Chair one, this is an instantiation of the class. Chair two, uh, we learn then the chair one, uh, chair, the, the class chair will be say, uh, uh, properties, two types of properties. One is the fields of the, meaning the data that are contained in the class. And the other are the method, the actions that you can do on the data that this class contains. So we know, the, we are defining a little better what is a class. Class is a, a container that has inside the data and methods, fields and methods. And the methods usually acts on the fields, on the data of that class. So uh, the normal way to, the normal, no, no, it's not the normal, the one way to act in, in our class system, say, okay, I have the class chair, now, I don't know, we don't know why, how, sorry, 
create one chair. This one chair brings with itself, and this is care of the, of the Java virtual machines or the compiler, bring with it, it is data and these uh, methods. Okay. So and if I take this chair one, I will be chair one and I will call a method on chair one, meaning an action on the data of chair one. If the method is that is static, I don't need to, to declare one chair, uh, chair one. I just, I just claim, call the, the action, the, uh, the, the method, just on the name of the class, chair dot, I don't know, number of legs. So this is the meaning that the static method belongs to a chair. I don't, when a method, uh, when a, a class is, sta is static, I don't need to instantiate objects. I can execute methods of the class which are static without uh, creating the space for a specific object. So I mean, these are has some consequences because this means that that space, every method that is declared static, any class that is declared static, the compiler knows that he has to uh, create a space for them in a particular part of the memory. So all the static met class and static method stays in a particular part of the memory that we will see in the name. And, uh, a static method can access on only static data. Static data that stays in this part of the memory. This brings you some uh, freedom of acting and programming. And the static method can co only call other static method. One important class of, uh, of or library of static methods in Java is the math class. The math class contain uh, the usual object of uh, algebra like uh, in uh, uh, calculus like uh, logarithm, exponential, sinus, cosinus and these all are static methods for instance they are well implemented that way you don't have to declare a class for, for doing so here is a, a way so to call a static method, how you, how you do? You have the class name and then the method name separated by a full stop. Uh, uh, things like this call a method of the class. So the main, stat the main method is static. And uh, it's static because it has to be run before any possible other actions. So there has to be something that is uh, put a load into memory before everything else. So that's the reason the main is static. I told it that you uh, uh, that the static uh, things goes into a particular part of the memory. And in fact there are uh, the Java uh, there are two main parts. One is the stack and the other is the heap the heap memory and the stack memory. Actually, Java has four partitions of, for, for the memory where we put the objects. And um, in Java, uh, in, in stack memory stay in, uh, in some part. We have also had to part of, we have heap stack code and static. The static object stay in the memory where the st for, the st for the static memory. The heap memory will contain the classes that we and the objects. The code will maintain the, the, the code. And um, uh, and the stack session contains uh, uh, method local variables. So we will see what is a local variable. Now I don't pretend that you understand all this, this flow of things that are, I am saying to you. 
and this uh, seems kind of unrelated to the task we have to do, but uh, uh, they will clarify sooner or later, very soon, when you, you will be using them. But then you know, you have, uh, my, my main uh, objective here is to put your attention on all these details. No one of these detail, details is uh, casual. Finally, main has also a type which is void. Vo void because it doesn't, the main uh, doesn't return any value. There are, if you want to subdivide the, the method, there are methods that return values, and these values can be classes, can be primitives, uh, as we say, we, we say, we will see later what are primitives, and uh, can return nothing, which is then void. Void that, uh, main doesn't ret is not a method that is required to ret return something. To give, to pass things to other uh, routine. But that is natural because it main is the, the, the way they structure all the other things, so it's reasonable that this work. <coughs> Going back to the code, there is uh, another thing which is system put dot out dot print ln. In particular, what is uh, if this is an action, in, in particular this called Pietro Pietro Ciao. Pietro is my son, as you know. Pietro Ciao, this uh, this uh, right print say print print stand for print ln line, print the line, this command. This command is contained in a library which is system.out. Meaning that there is a library that contains a lot of operations that uh, relate to the system on which the program works. And uh, there will be system in, for instance, and system out. Dot in, dot out. These are two sub-libraries of system. And println is a containing the system out. <coughs> and here I put this, what is system out, if you want to go deeper in the concept. Here also, as you see, you see stack overflow. Stack overflow is a community of programmers and so there are, I don't say billions of <laughs> Java programmers, but for uh, thousands of, of uh, probably hundreds of thousands of Java programmers in the world. So Stack Overflow is a place where you can ask uh, things about Java, how to do better things. And uh, you usually find there a, a very uh, expert answer to your question that sometimes also are also not easy to understand, but you, with a little practice, you, you start to understand. <clears throat> From the execution of the program that we have to do, uh, we have three options. One to execute inside the clips, inside the IE. One to execute outside the, uh, outside the clips. Then you have to export the program a library, and then you execute the program, for instance, from the command line. And then we have a third, a third way to, uh, to do a program, to execute a program, which is uh, uh, executing the, the uh, Java program inside the OMS console. The object modeling system provides a, a way to execute programs in Java program. And that's the, the end of this introduction.